Josh, how are you? Blessed. Huh. I'm glad you recognize that, but what makes you think you're particularly blessed right now? Well, I have a new recipe for green chili burritos that's gonna add piquancy to my table. Piquancy? I don't think I've ever heard you use that word. Oh, I'm trying to improve on several fronts with my vocabulary, my recipes, and my blessedness. Well, Josh, you know, the first couple of verses of Psalm 1 says that we are blessed by the things that we avoid. As believers, we're not to live our lives in the same way that unbelievers do, and we're not to be mockers of the Christian way of life. So is there anything in Psalm about burritos? No, not really. But it does talk about trees and bearing fruit in season. Now, the trees here are a metaphor for Jesus' followers who bear fruit for the appropriate seasons of their Christian life. So no piquancy, no burrito, no perfect recipe? No, no, and no. However, the Bible does say that we are to be holy as Jesus was holy. But we get our holiness from our faith in him, not by our actions and also not in any perfect burrito recipe. However, we are told to clean up our act and stop doing the things that non-believers do. Uh, clean up our act? Yeah, you know, start taking your thoughts captive. Stop thinking about unimportant things like burritos. Start memorizing scriptures that are important to you. You know, God says to think about things that are true and honorable and right. So memorizing scripture like Psalm 1? Exactly. I just don't get it. Psalm 1 says that we should stay away from the wicked, the sinners, the mockers. That means I'd have to stay away from a lot of my friends and actually a lot of my family. Well, Josh, maybe rather than avoiding them, this could be the perfect opportunity for you to share the gospel with them and, and help them learn about Jesus. I mean, this is exactly what Jesus did. Yeah, but how am I supposed to do that? Look at the second verse in Psalm 1. It says, this guy's delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. So here's a question. How often do you read the Bible? Meditate? I don't do drugs. You're thinking medicating. I said meditating. Oh, good. You had me worried there for a minute. Let's get back to Psalm 1. So if you spend some time each day reading the Bible and thinking about those verses, you can begin to change your life. Okay, but how do I do that? Well, you begin to do the things that the Bible says. What's the second great commandment? Mm, a burrito a day keeps the doctor away? No, it's actually love your neighbor as yourself. How am I supposed to love my neighbors? I don't even know them. Well, sharing the gospel with them is a pretty loving thing to do, but also try serving them, unprompted, like shovel their sidewalk or rake their leaves. They may ask you why you're doing it, but you can say, you know what, I'm just trying to be like Jesus. Once you start serving people, it will become a habit. Now, they might begin to like you and invite you for dinner. The Bible says to do that? Read it, Josh. Find out for yourself. Maybe I will. Maybe I will invite my neighbors over. I do have a new recipe to share with them. Hmm. Let me guess. No, bacon-wrapped green chili burritos. Nice. They'll love it. So obviously this week we're talking about Scripture and the Bible, God's written word or instructions to us. We all know that the Bible is something that we're supposed to read, but we often struggle with understanding what we read or maybe with not reading it enough. Maybe even we disagree with something that we've read in the Bible. One of the things that we saw Josh and Dave talk about was how sometimes the blessings that we read about in the Bible have to do with what we should avoid rather than what we should participate in. And this week's first question addresses exactly that. So why don't we get started and check that out now. Cooking is an awesome gift, and I know some amazing cooks. My grandma makes the best Christmas cookie spread, and I've always wondered how can she make it taste so good? I remember asking her for a recipe to one of my favorites when I was younger, an orange zest cake batter cookie. I remember her writing it out in detail, all the ingredients and the amounts, the stove temperatures, the timings, and the exact directions on how to make them. 
She even included these little notes on how she discovered this or that adjustment. Now, not having baked myself, I assumed I'd just read this, do that, and then bam, the perfect Christmas cookies would pop out. Well, my first attempt was disappointing to say the least. Going back to one of the little notes that I found at different altitudes, I had to adjust some ingredients. Round two was better, and I started to recognize what was off about my cookies compared to the grandma made ones, and I double checked my portions. The third go was a success, and I finally had grandma approved orange zest cookies. By now, I'd memorized the recipe and I could make them anywhere if I had all the right tools. It's a gift that I can now give to those around me, or just me if I'm craving some delicious cookies, and a skill that I can use if I want to learn how to bake other things. I still read the recipe because the little notes make me smile, and I can also copy the recipe for others if they ask me for it. That's so awesome. All right, so imagine that the Bible is our life cookbook. It has all kinds of recipes and little notes inside that God made for us to know him and understand his teachings. There's instructions, there's directions, and insight and all manner of information important to living more like Jesus. So we all have that info available and we could attempt the different recipes in life, if you will, but nothing is ever that simple. It's only when we've practiced a few or maybe even a thousand times that we get the hang of things. There's a lot to think about too. I mean, there's infinite amounts of info on God's heart and creation and it's poured out over every page of the Bible. Yeah, when we continually go back to God's word, we get more than just a man-made recipe. We get a living, active story that continually reveals more about the will of God. Now, we can't expect to read it once, do it, and come out with the perfect results. We have to be willing to consider why God is teaching us all these different things, sometimes difficult things. What do the lessons themselves reveal about God? What do they reveal about us? And then once we have the information, we have to be willing to act on it and to use our knowledge to contribute to the kingdom of God around us. Man, so let's go ahead and dive into this week's second question, and we can talk more about that. Any kind of learning comes in stages. Say I'm learning Spanish. I can't just memorize each word in the Spanish language and then try to speak speak it fluently. First of all, that would take forever. Then there's all the sentence structure, conjugations, blah, blah, blah. Take some serious discipline and commitment before a simple conversation can be held confidently. Yeah, well, learning is rarely about just memorizing information. I mean, Rachel's example was just one picture of many that we can paint when we turn to God's word and how to apply that learning to our lives. Even that picture doesn't quite grasp the magnitude of information and revelation that we have right at our fingertips in the Bible. Let's take a second to ponder on the memory verse for this week. We'll find that in Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, it says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees that are planted along the river bank, bearing fruit in each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. Here the author, he's talking about the joys of those who delight in the law and meditate on it, comparing them to the tree in this way, that then they were planted along the river so that they never had to wait for rain. They could drink their fill and delighted in doing so, prospering as they grew. These trees continued to bear fruit throughout the different seasons because they would apply the proper amount of water to the branches at all times. The Bible then must be our river. And we not only take in what it has on its pages, but we must also bear fruit by delighting in our study, meditating on what we've learned, and applying the knowledge to the different branches of our lives. There's something called the word hand, and this is described in your Renovate book. And that helps us set the application into motion. 
Well, God's word is so rich in information that at times it can be overwhelming to dive into. It's like kind of like when you jump into the deep end before you've even learned how to swim. Well, the word hand illustration can help us focus our study and give us a path to follow that helps us not only take in the information, but really to understand what's going on in between the pages of the Bible and how it applies to our lives. Throughout this Renovate series, we've been focused on tearing down the walls that separate us from God and rebuilding our lives around Jesus. God's word is the knowledge of him and his character. When we delight in knowing as much as we can, the walls that we build will stand on the foundation of the rock of ages. They will be able to bear the weight of our lives and they'll hold up strong against the storms in any season. So the third question this week, it does require a little reading from your Renovate book. So hopefully you brought one with you. And if not, you can share with the person around you. So why don't you take a minute now to discuss our final question this week? You know, when I think of scripture, I go back to when Jesus was taken into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and then he was visited by Satan and Satan said if you're hungry turn these stones to bread and Jesus said man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God and that is actually comes right out of the book of Deuteronomy there is just so much power in our lives that we can obtain if we would read the word, live by it, embrace it, absorb it in our very being so that life flows out of it. And so I'm just going to challenge you guys that you would take time every day, even if it's five minutes to read a portion of the Bible. Start with a book like the Gospels and start reading through, if you can, a chapter a day. Just commit for this week, I'm going to start doing it and read a chapter a day. You will begin to start feeling and sensing how the Word of God is bringing life within you. So take the time, set it aside, begin to read the Word as if your life depended on it because it does. God bless you as you grow in God's glory through his word.